You're listening to the weekly Bible lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. This is the lesson for Sunday, July 28, 2024. Subject, Truth. Golden Text, John. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Responsive reading is from John. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone but I and the Father that sent me. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The Bible, Psalms Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Daniel in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep brake from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house, 
and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God for ever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. Proverbs My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Psalms For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. John Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. 2 Corinthians We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth. First John. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health, 
with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Truth is the intelligence of immortal mind. Truth is the light which dispels error. The spiritual sense of truth must be gained before truth can be understood. This sense is assimilated only as we are honest, unselfish, loving, and meek. In the soil of an honest and good heart, the seed must be sown. Being is holiness, harmony, immortality. It is already proved that a knowledge of this, even in small degree, will uplift the physical and moral standard of mortals, will increase longevity, will purify and elevate character. Thus, progress will finally destroy all error and bring immortality to light. Christian science speedily shows truth to be triumphant. All the evidence of physical sense and all the knowledge obtained from physical sense must yield to science, to the immortal truth of all things. The best sermon ever preached is truth practiced and demonstrated by the destruction of sin, sickness, and death. Knowing this, and knowing too that one affection would be supreme in us and take the lead in our lives, Jesus said, No man can serve two masters. We cannot build safely on false foundations. Truth makes a new creature, in whom all things pass away and all things are become new. Passions, selfishness, false appetites, hatred, fear, all sensuality yield to spirituality, and the superabundance of being is on the side of God good. We cannot fill vessels already full they must first be emptied. Let us disrobe error. Then, when the winds of God blow, we shall not hug our tatters close about us. The way to extract error from mortal mind is to pour in truth through flood tides of love. Christian perfection is one on no other basis. Canst thou by searching find out God? It is easier to desire truth than to rid oneself of error. Mortals may seek the understanding of Christian science, but they will not be able to glean from Christian science the facts of being without striving for them. This strife consists in the endeavor to forsake error of every kind and to possess no other consciousness but good. In order to apprehend more, we must put into practice what we already know. We must recollect that truth is demonstrable when understood and that good is not understood until demonstrated. If faithful over a few things, we shall be made rulers over many. But the one unused talent decays and is lost. When the sick or the sinning awake to realize their need of what they have not, they will be receptive of divine science, which gravitates towards soul and away from material sense, removes thought from the body, and elevates even mortal mind to the contemplation of something better than disease or sin. The true idea of God gives the true understanding of life and love, robs the grave of victory, takes away all sin and the delusion that there are other minds, and destroys mortality. Before human knowledge dipped to its depths, 
into a false sense of things, into belief in material origins which discard the one mind and true source of being. It is possible that the impressions from truth were as distinct as sound, and that they came as sound to the primitive prophets. If the medium of hearing is wholly spiritual, it is normal and indestructible. Divine science derives its sanction from the Bible, and the divine origin of science is demonstrated through the holy influence of truth in healing sickness and sin. This healing power of truth must have been far anterior to the period in which Jesus lived. It is as ancient as the ancient of days. It lives through all life and extends throughout all space. Because truth is infinite, error should be known as nothing. Because truth is omnipotent in goodness, error, truth's opposite, has no might. Evil is but the counterpoise of nothingness. The greatest wrong is but a supposititious opposite of the highest right. The confidence inspired by science lies in the fact that truth is real and error is unreal. Error is a coward before truth. Divine science insists that time will prove all this. Both truth and error have come nearer than ever before to the apprehension of mortals, and truth will become still clearer as error is self-destroyed. The understanding that the ego is mind and that there is but one mind or intelligence, begins at once to destroy the errors of mortal sense and to supply the truth of immortal sense. This understanding makes the body harmonious. It makes the nerves, bones, brain, etc., servants instead of masters. If man is governed by the law of divine mind, his body is in submission to everlasting life and truth and love. Truth, life, and love are the only legitimate and eternal demands on man, and they are spiritual lawgivers, enforcing obedience through divine statutes. Truth is God's remedy for error of every kind and truth destroys only what is untrue. Hence the fact that today, as yesterday, Christ casts out evils and heals the sick. The eternal truth destroys what mortals seem to have learned from error, and man's real existence as a child of God comes to light. Truth demonstrated is eternal life. We are Christian scientists only as we quit our reliance upon that which is false and grasp the true. We are not Christian scientists until we leave all for Christ. Human opinions are not spiritual. They come from the hearing of the ear, from corporeality, instead of from principle, and from the mortal instead of from the immortal. Spirit is not separate from God. Spirit is God. We walk in the footsteps of truth and love by following the example of our Master in the understanding of divine metaphysics. Eternal truth is changing the universe. As mortals drop off their mental swaddling clothes, thought expands into expression. Let there be light is the perpetual demand of truth and love, changing chaos into order 
and discord into the music of the spheres. I will now read the three daily duties from the Church Manual by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this Church to pray each day, Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me, and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A rule for motives and acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to Duty It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged, and justified or condemned. And from Science and Health, Christian scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you, either when asleep or when awake. This Bible lesson was prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of scriptural quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, 1910 edition, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.